Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to showcase a prime example of how to build a global fintech locally. This fireside session will focus on Finabler as an Abu Dhabi success story and will be moderated by Omar Christidis, founder and CEO Arabnet, which produces leading events, insights and innovation focused on the technology and innovation industry of the MENA region. Please welcome Omar Christidis to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and great to see so many people here really focused on the fintech opportunity in the region, one of the fastest growing opportunities uh, that we're seeing in the digital space. It's my privilege to be holding this uh, fireside chat with uh, Promov, who is the CEO of the largest or one of the largest fintech companies here in the region. It's maybe one of the most global companies born out of the UAE, having a presence in 170 countries, 18,000 employees globally, listed on the London Stock Exchange, and has become a dominant player and one of the largest forces in the payments industry, uh, regionally and globally. Let's take a quick look at a video that tells us a little bit more about it. No video. Excellent. Well, <laughs> quick switch then. Ladies and gentlemen, gives me great pleasure to introduce Promoth Mangat, CEO of Enabler. Thank you. Will you join us here, please? Sure. Promoth, a pleasure to, to be chatting with you here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. And, uh, it's been quite an eventful year for you guys this year, huh? Listing on the London Stock Exchange, uh, stellar financial results, uh, building a new partnership with Samsung. Tell us a little bit about the evolution of this really homegrown global giant in the uh, financial services technology space. Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost, it's been a, quite a ride for us since 1980. The roots of enabler from UA Exchange way back in 1980. So first and foremost, uh, uh, we have a great beneficiary of uh, UAE as a country, the farsightedness of the government in terms of policy making in building a global business and the regulatory environment has really helped us. So too is the case uh, with our founder and uh, Chairman Dr. Shetty, who always had this aspiration of building a business globally. But the two most important facts which has really helped us to really evolve in the changing uh, payment trends and the industry overall has been one, the way we have taken customer to the heart, and two, the way we have kept innovation always on the go. So when you say customer on the heart, it is, you know, it's very easy to say rather than getting it done. Specifically, when you have a global institution of 40 years, quite natural that bureaucracy, the making sure that the way you do things gets slowed down, to making sure that what we do how we serve the customers in the way they want to do, specifically as an organization, really operating in both developed markets and emerging markets, you can have a one size fits for all. You need to make sure that you understand the customer needs on each of those markets and behave. Number two is innovation. So for example, innovation till yesterday could be largely a product driven innovation, but now the innovation that you see is largely to making sure that payments becomes part of an experience payments getting embedded and payments becoming invisible itself. So that the way the two of the facets has really helped us to making sure that we really evolve in the changing times with the change of the consumer behavior and the larger ecosystem of payments getting evolved. And there are a lot of players entering the payment space today, right? So we're seeing the entrance of, of telcos. They've been in the payment space in Africa for a long time, but the region's, you know, one of the region's biggest telcos now, STC launching STC Pay. We're seeing the big global platforms, the Googles and Facebooks, all really aggressively looking at this space. Uh, so it's really heating up. I'm curious, if you look into the future, if you had a, a, a crystal ball, what do you, who do you think will be the winners and losers? How do you think this space will play out? And uh, as Finabler, what is the opportunity that you want to capture in this competitive landscape? I think the first thing first is that this is a large, huge market. So even if you take the cross-border payments on a C2C, you're talking about a market size of $700 billion, which is growing at four, four and a half percentage. 
But in the last one decade, with the kind of advent of mobility and payments becoming seamless and global, that opportunity has really graduated to a $138 trillion market kind of an opportunity, including host of C2C, B2C, B2B, host payments opportunity. So it's quite natural that everyone has a global aspiration to participate in this intermediation, right? But again, when you're talking about cross-border, the complexity is humongous. It's about talking about not a peer-to-peer -peer domestic. You're talking about re managing regulation, because this is a business of regulation. Equally and importantly, this business of trust. So you cannot do these things overnight. The kind of complexity that you have to manage on your processing at the last mile. It is very easy for someone to come at on the front end, a shiny app. You put a dozen engineers, give them a million dollars, give them like a two weeks, three weeks time, they can come with a shiny app. But the heavy lifting that you need to do to manage the processing from a treasury perspective, the complex amount of currency, the regulation, that's the kind of a heavy lifting that we have done. So what we are seeing is that why- so you're, you're kind of like the infrastructure here. You are the platform and you'd like everyone to sit on top of this platform. So while we have a large consumer business, we have got a 25 million consumer business globally spread in 45 markets. But the kind of the USP or the heavy lifting that we have done in terms of a global licensing in 45 markets, but I could serve 170 countries, the kind of the infrastructure in terms of technology and process, including pricing and treasury, and overarching the kind of the IP led that we have done, what we are seeing is that Finabler is emerging as a partner of choice for all these larger ecosystem players. You mentioned some of the names, whether it is Samsung, whether it is WeChat, whether it is Google, and the telco, which we announced this morning with Airtel Africa. So we are seeing huge amount of partnership opportunity really emerging, and we are leveraging that infrastructure to fulfill their aspiration. Wonderful. So uh, I want to talk about the, the fintech industry more broadly. And I want to think about what are the kind of top challenges that are facing the growth of, in the, of this industry, in your opinion. So, but before I ask you, I want to ask our audience. So uh, if we start out first, just a quick straw poll to see who's in the audience. If you are a fintech company, raise your hand, please. Fintech company. If you are a financial services institution, raise your hand. If you are a regulator or government entity, raise your hand. Okay, and if you're a technology or service provider, raise your hand. So we have really quite a diverse audience. And um, I'm curious, what does the audience think? If we think about the growth of the fintech industry in, in the region, what are our biggest challenges? Is it infrastructure, regulation, funding, customer awareness? And I'd like to raise your hand for only one choice. So, funding is the biggest problem for fintech in MENA. Raise your hand if you agree. Okay. Regulation is the biggest challenge for fintech in MENA. Infrastructure is the biggest challenge for fintech in MENA. Customer trust and awareness is the biggest challenge for fintech in MENA. Okay. So, really, we have a standout winner, which is regulation. Regulation. That's what our, our audience believes today. Promoth, what do you think? I think uh, it will be unfair to look at uh, MENA as a, you know, a homogeneous. It's quite diverse, because we have got uh, different kind of economies uh, within MENA. So we have got an uh, economy like UAE, which has got uh, farsightedness in terms of access to capital, regulation, infrastructure, and so on and so forth. But then you have got large markets like uh, Egypt or Saudi Arabia on one hand, where you've got tremendous opportunity in terms of serving the people. So the, it varies from uh, market to market. You cannot really cage and box into one uh, uh, set of doing it. Um, the, the regulatory environment is fast catching up, and EDGM is one such example. We have seen that, and we are seeing that across the region in GCC at large, or UAE in particular, or Abu Dhabi with EDGM, quite a lot of activities happening, whether it be in terms of standardization of API sandboxes, or the sandboxes and the incubator world, or the accelerator world, or the corporate startup programs like what we have initiated, quite a lot of things are happening of doing it. Yes, you have got a lot of, but the, one of the excitement that you should look at MENA as a region is that this region, almost a fifth of the adult population is unbanked, don't have access to the basic financial services. But if you exclude some of the high developed economies like in GCC, that number shoots up to almost 40%. Wow. I mean, that's a huge opportunity where you could include them. I don't want to use the word banked or unbanked. 
I would like to use the word, can we provide them access to basic financial instruments? So not only in terms of access, how can we drive usage? So whether it is in the larger Africa context as well. So me, huge amount of an opportunity, excitement for us that you know, as a startups, as the fintech, we have got a lot of problems to solve and a meaningful commercial viable ventures can be built by solving the problems society. Excellent. Uh, another question really here is to try to understand the banks and uh, fintechs collaboration, right? We've heard a lot in the last 18, 24 months about banks and fintechs collaborating together. This is going to be the future. Banks have the infrastructure, they have the regulation, startups, they have the innovation, they're lean, they're hungry. And yet we haven't actually seen this concretely develop. We have not seen so many partnerships between banks and fintechs. Um, what do you think is really needed for that kind of fruitful collaboration? And what is it that you want to do differently within this context as Finabler? I think uh, uh, Finabler and I am in person, I've been a great beneficiary of working with startups. I think, uh, you know, the kind of the limitations that a large funnel service organization will have can be definitely be unwinded while working with the startups and other systems, right? And, you know, startups are hungry for scale and large organizations are finding ways that how can we unwind the complexities that you are handling. We are a great beneficiary of that. But if you ask me, are we happy enough? No, we are not happy enough. We can do quite a lot. But in all fairness, the way you look at it, you know, whether the kind of the, as I mentioned, the kind of the accelerator programs, the incubators programs, corporate setups, we have come far, far ahead. I think we should not look at that the glass is half empty, the glass is half full. We have done quite a lot in the last ecosystems. And uh, we are seeing regulation. I think that has been the biggest raise of hands from the audience. We've been quite seeing progressive regulations with ADG, for example, of having that. So we are seeing that kind of progress happening it. But we have to find ways, yes, for us. One of the biggest things we have been really focusing working with the startups has been that the kind of the cultural change it brings institution. In the last five years, we have been a very much focusing on working on this. Not only in terms of acquisitions, we did series of acquisitions, but also investments, but also mentorship working with the startups. So we have been a great beneficiary of that. So we, what I see is that the mindset, not only from a skill set perspective, mindset change is the biggest change that we can see working with the startups. And we have been a great, great beneficiary of that. So let's ask our audience again. Question for you. Startups and banks, match made in heaven? or startups are from Mars and uh, banks are from Venus. So I want first uh, answer. Made it, match made in heaven, raise your hands. Startups and banks, match made in heaven. Startups and banks for, on totally different planets, from totally different planets. OK. So it seems our audience is, is about two thirds different planets, really. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this place plays out. And uh, I hope that your uh, different approach will be able to allow you to access more opportunities. Uh, I, I'll ask you one last question before we move to the next part of our, our discussion. Uh, we've got a lot of entrepreneurs, fintechs, uh, we've got financial services and regulators in the room. What's your advice for each of these entities in this very rapidly moving space? I think for the startup and entrepreneurs, I would like to say a big congratulations to all of you. Um, you have taken the first step on the entrepreneurship of plunging in. I think that's the biggest thing of doing it. Right, and that makes the whole lot of a, a difference of doing it. Uh, what I want to look at is that you really need to focus on those things which can really become the scale of the compelling problems that you could solve. And being on this fintech with the technology being democratized, you have got a fair chance in really putting your foot with some of the large global organizations. You can really uh, make sure that you are competing with those organizations. And that's a great opportunity technology has brought in. And that's what we have realized of doing it. So as long as there is a mindset in terms of partnering, in terms of a scale, and we are solving against the compelling problems which can give commercial advantage for sustenance as well, I think we are up for larger success jointly together solving the problems. My excitement of doing that. From a regulation standpoint of view, Regulations has to be progressive, and we need to make sure that the changing customer behavior, changing patterns, 
How can we really adopt that into the main life? Definitely should be the progressive leader. And sandbox environment is a great start for us, and we've been a great beneficiary all across the globe in doing that. Thank you. And I, and I think, you know, one thing that I've heard from a lot of startups myself is this idea of harmonized regulatory uh, frameworks across borders to allow that scaling from market to market uh, for, for our regional fintechs. Uh, just before we wrap up, uh, I'd like, uh, there's going to be a special announcement. And uh, to help us make this uh, special announcement, I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Uh, Wailum Kwok, the director at ADGM, and Mr. Abhishant Pant, founder and CFO of the FinTech Yatra. If uh, the gentleman would please join us on stage. Yes, and a big round of applause. So, exciting news, something breaking. Abhishan, tell us what exactly is going on. Yeah. Uh, is it on? Hi. Uh, so, we run a concept called uh, the FinTech Yatra. It is essentially a road journey. With support from uh, Finabler and Pramoth has been truly a visionary to think in that sense. Uh, we are looking at conducting a 3,000 kilometer road journey across the Gulf ecosystem, possibly starting from KSA and ending in, U in Abu Dhabi. Uh, it will be a 3,000 kilometer FinTech road journey. So the idea is simple that we will connect with startups across GCC ecosystem, KSA, Kuwait, Oman, uh, UAE, and overall the ecosystem, trying to identify most unique stories from the Gulf value chain, and possibly via Finabler and via ADGM coming into picture, catalyzing some of the stories so that we have more hands raised in this room, which can say that the financial institutions and regulators are progressively looking at the ecosystem. So that's what we intend to do. And I think ADGM has been a, um, a very progressive regulator and friend to the startups. How is ADGM supporting this initiative, uh, Wailum? <laughs> Maybe this one works. Hello. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, at ADGM, um, we we recognize the huge potential of fintech to transform the financial services sector and to promote inclusive growth and financial inclusion. So what Gov Yatra is doing is really walking the talk. Uh, identifying uh, pain points on the ground and finding real solutions on the ground to benefit the local community. So at ADGM, we want these innovative solutions not just to benefit the local community, but to thrive and benefit the wider uh, uh, GCC and MENA region. So what we hope to do is to also anchor and attract the founders of such innovations to tap the fintech ecosystem support in ADGM to help them grow and scale their business um, uh, to bring um, impactful benefits and positive impact to uh, the wider region. So to us, that is a truly exciting and uh, uh, inspiring collaborative effort. So of course, we are all in. Wonderful. And Promoth, uh, how are you supporting this and, and anything to add on the, uh, for regarding this? I think we're quite excited with this uh, partnership with uh, Fintech Yatra and ATGM. Thank you, Velok, and thank you, Prashant, for joining hand with Finable on this. With the kind of success we saw with Fintech Yatra in India as a market, quite been a quite a great journey Fintech Yatra had in India. I really want to make sure that we really bridge that strength of, uh, of uh, India into GCC at large. As mentioned, a very growing economy, young population, a lot of problems for to solve, and we're very happy that ADGM has joined hands. We really look forward to meet as much as the startup community and find ways where we can work together. Really excited, look forward to this association. Wonderful, and an, yes, Abhishan. There was a video that we had created. Yes, we're gonna cue it just now. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, anything any, anyone would like to add before? Uh, uh, shall we take a picture to commemorate this, uh, sure. this occasion? And yep. in the meanwhile, they'll be queuing the video. Thank you. Gentlemen. Should we hand over this card? Uh, yes. I can help you with this. To, uh, 
This is the car we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.